Are you a business owner and self-employed looking to get a high-end mortgage? So what I mean by that is you're actually earning a lot of money and now you're looking to hit a mortgage, but you're not quite sure what the best strategy is for you. If you are self-employed looking to get a big mortgage, stay tuned. I'm going to tell you all about it. Niche Advice is authorized and regulated by the Financial Conduct Authority. Hi, it's Pyam here from Niche Advice. Hope you're well. Uh, in this episode, I thought I'd talk about uh, self-employed mortgages, but specifically self-employed mortgages for people that are big earners uh, and uh, how they should go about getting a mortgage and some of the strategies available and some of the things that we do as mortgage brokers that sets us aside from uh, the lenders direct and how it could save thousands and thousands of pounds for entrepreneurs. Um, so. As an entrepreneur myself uh, and, and somebody who is self-employed, um, one of the things that I can, um, you know, I, I know about is when you're sitting down and doing your annual accounts with your accountant and the conversations that take place. And usually they go by, right, I don't want to pay too much tax. Do something, make, ma make it work, do your magic. But basically, um, we go through life, um, unfortunately, um, not wanting to pay uh, the tax, obviously uh, the most legal way, um, but um, you know you, those conversations. I'm for you know get had. You know that's the day of you know that's just normal reality of running a business um, where you do have those conversations with your accountant to say, okay, what can I offset against my cost? You know, genuine sort of stuff that happens on a daily basis. So that's all great. You know, you go through, you're making a lot of money, you're not paying as much tax because there's a lot of your stuff expenses get offset. Your accountant is very, very good and he's wonderful with the figures. And every year he does a, he does a ma magical miracle for you. But what happens if your wife or your husband turns around and says, Do you know what? I've had enough of this property. I now want to move. Okay. And let's say you're moving from your four or five hundred thousand pounds uh, property to a million pounds or one and a half million pound property then you're going to start having some problems problem number one they look back the lenders look back and they'll go okay well, well you know if you go to the high street they go all right well average the last two years or well, average the last three years yeah. salary plus dividends what that means is they're essentially going to average out so if you took out say you paid yourself twenty thousand pounds a year and then you took out um you know fifty thousand pounds dividends every year that's what they will average okay so if you're looking to hit a i don't know seven hundred thousand pound mortgage you've got earnings of 50 60 70 80 thousand pounds and that's not going to work on the income multiples so you then have problems okay all of a sudden oh my god let me go and see my bank manager my bank's been all, always very good i've had such a long relationship with them i've been their customer for 25 years good luck go and do that uh, and then you soon find out that very very good bank and that charming bank manager is actually, his hands are tied because their criteria very much says that they will only accept an average of the last two years salary plus dividends. But what happens if you didn't need to take the money out? What happens over the years that you've got other income streams, maybe other businesses, maybe you've got property income, that you didn't need to take that money out and you've put that money in your business. So you, you've kept that money in your business because essentially you don't want to pay um, corporation tax at a higher rate then. Yeah, at the end of the day, you've got to pay corporation tax sometime, but you know, for security reasons, for business purposes, for whatever your reasons are, you haven't taken your dividends out. Okay, you've paid yourself a minimum income and now you're in a position that all the banks, you're saying, you know, I want to go for a seven, eight hundred thousand pound mortgage. And all the banks are going well what did you draw down for the last two years but i didn't need to do it oh right sorry we can't we can't do that we only do salary and dividends so what happens then i am getting a lot of cases where i am working on net profits okay so how does this work you basically work from the lenders will take into account if you're a hundred percent shareholder or you've got a shareholding. Some lenders will say, well, I'm only a 50% partner of it. If it's a husband and wife, they'll normally take 100% of it. Um, but essentially what they will work from is your salary plus your net profit after corporation tax. So all of a sudden, if you've made 200,000 pounds and you haven't taken that money out, we've got solutions that will work for you. 
Then you say, wonderful, that's what I was looking for, Paya. However, there are different band of lenders and it works from a rate perspective and, and where they are on the high street. So you've got some lenders who will say, yeah, we'll work from the net profit. However, we will only uh, do it on an average basis. So um, the way they will do it is obviously they'll average out your net profit so that could work for some people and you get a high streetish rate. So you got a pretty decent rate for that strategy. Okay. So if you can work it that way, that's the best way. Okay. You normally get around four and a half times your income. Uh, so it's not going to be like five times, five and a half times your income, but certainly around four and a half times your income. And then they'll average out your salary, um, generally your net profit over the last two years and then plus your salary. So that's a great way. Uh, and obviously that saves uh, that saves a lot for you um, in shorter term, obviously longer term, you've got to pay tax on that corporation tax that you're leaving. Uh, you've got to pay corporation tax anyway, but you've got to pay dividends tax somewhere down the line. Um, however, the conversations that I'm having with a lot of my clients and the deals that I'm at the moment doing is people have had a big jump in their business. So let's just say the, the latest one I'm doing, uh, yeah, 50,000 pounds, okay? from the previous year. So his net profit was 50,000 pounds. I think he paid himself 15,000 pounds. The latest year, 250,000 pounds profit. Now, if you went to a lender that will take an average of the last two years, it doesn't work out to be a lot, especially if you want to get a mortgage of, I don't know, 700, 800, whatever it is, okay? So we've got lenders that will specifically only work from the latest year's accounts which means if you're filing a big year and there's been a big jump, um, then they will do the latest year's accounts. And that's really important. So the lenders that will average generally, they could take a view of the latest year's accounts, but if it's a big jump, you know, more than 20% typically, they will say, no, we'll average it. But I've got lenders that will specifically in their criteria says, look, we don't care about the previous years. As long as we can see that he's made some money, what we are interested in is his latest year. So fantastic. So if you file 50K the year before, you're going to file 250,000 pounds. Great. What's the downside? There are always downsides with everything. So um, the first option is pretty much near enough high street rates with high street criteria, probably with 15% deposit is managed, manageable to get yeah, a decent deal. With the second option, what you will find is the choice of lenders are limited. Um, you can get them with 15% deposit, but I think if it's a big loan and there's a big jump, uh, or if there's any blips on the credit profile, you would probably need 20% deposit, but we have got access to lenders that would do 15% deposit. So it really comes down to your background, um, what the nature of business is as well. You know, if, if it's a volatile business, then may want 20%. If it's, you know, if you've got a decent background, decent enough income structure, but there's just been a big jump. So let's just say you've been making 100K and all of a sudden you're making 400K. They may get a little bit nervous around that because they want to see sustainability of that uh, of that income. But 20% um, they'll do, 15%, um, I've, I've, we are doing them. They're just a little bit more cautious around that. So latest year's accounts. So if you wanted to average it out from your net profit, 15% should be fine. If you want to do it on latest year's account, big, big jump, then between 15 to 20% deposit. Rate-wise, right, on the second option, it's a non-high street option, the ones that will go the, um, the latest year. Um, I think the rates are around about three, I think 3% to 3.5%. So almost double a normal mortgage rate. So if you came to me at the moment and you said, look, I've got 15% deposit, we'll probably get your rate of under 2%, probably about 1.7, 1.8, something like that, so below 2%. But in this scenario, in this strategy, you know, rates are higher. It's going to be over 3%, certainly. Um, but then you've just got to do your numbers. I always, uh, because you're talking about tax, you're talking about accounts, you're talking about finances. So I always have this discussion. I sort of have the, give them the choices, give them the rates, tell them which lenders they are, what the strategies are, what the underwriting process is. But also tell my clients, go and speak to your accountant. Go and speak to your accountant. If you want to take out your salary and dividends, there's lots of options. You can go to all the high street rates out there, high street lenders out there, but generally they'll, they'll average it if there's been a big jump. So 
look at that strategy. And then if you're just gonna go by your latest share big jump accounts, then obviously the rate is gonna be higher, but then you've gotta look at you know your finances, your accounts to see how that affects your dividends tax, how that affects everything else really. So they normally go away, come back to me, and they normally, um, I'm not gonna tell you which option they go for, but you know, it's nailed on, they tend to uh, go, go with one of the options that I've put out there. Um, I hope this is useful. I mean, you're not gonna get thousands of thousands of people watching this video because it's very specific to self-employed people that are earning really good money. Um, however, um, my YouTube channel is not really around views and you know comments, and although I would love comments and likes, and obviously you let me know what you think, it's really about sort of educating people and letting you guys know what's available and specifically what's available through brokers and not just myself, you know, a lot of the brokers have got these uh, access to these type of brokers, especially if you go for an independent broker, uh, someone who's experienced can talk to you about such, such um, products that are available. I hope you found this useful. Please do like and subscribe to the channel and leave some comments. Let me know what you think about some of these strategies. Thanks a lot. Take care. The content of this video does not constitute giving advice. It's purely for information purposes. All cases should be discussed with a professional mortgage broker before applying. As a mortgage is secured against your home or property, it could be repossessed if you do not keep up your repayments.